man. I'm going to do the tune for a mint time. It's time to take a closer look at the Geordie accent. Do bear in mind that this accent can vary greatly between different speakers due to a number of factors such as the area they grew up in, their age and the other influences in their lives. We're going to look at the general features and at the end you'll be able to hear the accent in full flow as I have a good old chinwag with a native Geordie lass. So, who are we meeting today? Alright, I'm Sophie and I'm from County Durham. Technically that makes me a pit yakker and this is my Geordie accent. The first feature we're going to look at is the short vowel a. Uh. It's present in words such as up, above, strut, supper and funny. Let's hear it. Up, above, strut, supper, funny. Sit upstairs on the bus. It's up and above. Struck your funky stuff. Now let's move on to our diphthong sounds. A diphthong is two vowel sounds that sit together to make one long moving vowel. The first one we're going to look at is the ow vowel, present in words such as town, mouth, brown and pound. But let's hear how Sophie says them. Tune. Mouth. Brune. Pooned. Give us a pooned. Gannon doom the tune. Next, let's take a look at the I diphthong, present in words such as all right, price, and night. All right. Price. Neat. Good neat. You were right about that. Say good night then. Next we have the A diphthong, present in words such as rain, insane, eight, away and same. Rain, insane, a shame, eight, away, same. The rain is insane. Moving on, we have the O diphthong, present in words such as hope, throat, float, own, croak and goat. Hope, throat, float, own, croak, goat. Look, it's a floating goat! Next, let's hear the ear diphthong. This is present in words such as near, hear, clear. Near, hear, clear. Didn't fear, I'm here. Moving on to consonant sounds and a glottalized P, which is often present in a Geordie accent. Now this glottalized P will happen when a P is between two vowel sounds. For example, in the following words and phrases, proper, paper, jumper, and keep it. Let's hear how Sophie says them. Proper, paper, jumper, keep it. That's not a proper jumper. And it's not just P that's glottalized. We can also glottalize the K if it appears between two vowel sounds. For example, in the following words, lucky, flicker, walk away. But let's hear Sophie. Lucky, flicker, walk away. You were lucky to walk away from that. And of course, we can glottalize T if it appears between two vowel sounds. For example, in words like better, automatic, attitude, and conjunctivitis. Better, automatic, attitude, conjunctivitis. 
Why, it's better to drive an automatic. A native Geordie speaker may drop the linking R sound, which would normally sound when a word ends with the letter R and the new word starts with a vowel sound. For example, if you said four oranges, we'd normally link it with an R, four oranges, four oranges. But let's hear how Sophie says it. Four oranges. Four oranges. Four oranges. There's often an interesting treatment of some words containing the long vowel or. Listen to how Sophie says cure, for, for and sure. Cure, for, for, sure. Are you sure they found a cure? Now, as this is a northern accent, we will, of course, see a shortening of the R vowel. This is the same in the American English accent as well. So listen to how Sophie says laugh, dance and bath. Laugh, dance. Don't laugh while I'm in the bath. Now, if a word ends with a Y, we will hear an E sound. However, in the Geordie accent, this will be shorter. Listen to Sophie saying pretty, billy, silly and city. Pretty, billy, silly billy. That's pretty silly. It's a pretty city. The dark L. Now the dark L can change from speaker to speaker and sometimes one speaker will use both versions. But let's have a listen to how Sophie says film, school and cool. Film, school. It's cool, I'm off to school. I'm off to school. The NG sound, mm, in Geordie tends to become an N sound made with the front of the tongue high, n, 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 instead of the back of the tongue high, n, n. Listen to how Sophie says dancing, laughing and kissing. Dancing, laughing, kissing. Are you dancing? Those were the main features, but let's hear that accent in full flow as I have a good old chat with Sophie about dialect. Where, where is you from? I'm from County Durham. County Durham. You don't live there now. No. You're living in Manchester. Manchester. So when you go home, do you feel like the accent is changing at all? Um, are, are your like grandparents' accents different to yours? Has it changed? Yes. So I think now younger people would say, for instance, I would say walk and talk. Um, whereas my granddad would say walk and talk. And I would I would say now, oh, I'm going down the town, I'm going down the town. Where they, they would definitely say, down the tune. It's all our the flower. Get us a glass of water. Right. So everything's a lot broader. A lot broader. Whereas the younger generation now, I think it's because of television. Mm -hmm. Maybe television and listening to the way other people speak were very influenced by that. Whereas my granddad, he didn't have a television. Yeah. So yeah. it's so it's much it's much softer now heard, with the younger generation. Yeah, he just heard Geordie accents his whole life. Fantastic. Okay, and do they ever struggle to understand you or you them? No, so my my family I can understand everything they say, but when I go back they say, Oh, you're a bit posher now and then I go back to my friends in Manchester and they're like, You're way more broad now, like you're broader now and yeah, so we have that. But when I first went to university, nobody could understand what I said. No. I had to speak so slow. And I had to speak like posh as I possibly could. <laughs> to me, it was posh to them. I still sounded really broad, Geordie. Um, if I'm trying to be friendly to someone, I usually like pipe the accent up because I think that I'm sure it was voted one of the friendliest accents. That's why all the call centres in England are in Newcastle. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's the friendliest accent if you're having an advert for cheap things they'll do they'll get put a geordie accent in because it's fun it's friendly and it's seen as working class okay okay i'd love to know what you think actually about the geordie accent do you find it to be quite friendly inviting um please do let me know down in the comments section below when i first went to uni a lot of people because they went to drama school a lot of people were southern which was a weird thing there were there were a lot of southerners and quite a few of them had never heard a geordie accent or one in real life 
which I found quite surprising. So they would just throw words at me to say, such as cornucopia <laughs> and um, conjunctivitis was one of them. Or they'd get me to say, how are you, man? Or it just just all the Geordie accents that they the Geordie words that they had heard and associated with my accent which was so you felt like you became a, a resource oh, for I them I was I was a resource and especially as well because it's such a hard accent to learn it is one of the hardest that I always get people sending me texts actors saying can you read this for me and record it so so I can learn your accent and I'm like oh okay five hours oh, of my time oh <laughs> bless you so much start charging i know Set up a service so there you go if you need a geordie accent then uh, you can pay big money for it right here <laughs> okay so let's um dig into the dialect so obviously we've talked about pronunciation um but dialect is a big part of every accent it can completely baffle people yeah. um when we hear these words that originate from certain areas so there's some words that we've written down here now the ones that I definitely know canny but what does canny mean for those who don't canny so you'd say she's a canny lass which means she's a nice lass or this is where it gets a difficult a lass a girl you could say she's a canny lass which means a nice girl or canny can mean like a lot you can say um there's canny loads of that or they give us a canny amount there, which means a lot, which is, it's weird, it's got two different meanings. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so I've also heard, but I don't really know what it means, why I man. And do people actually say that? Yeah, yeah. So if, um, why I means just yes. Yes, of course. Right. Yeah, it just means of course. And if if you were asking a question and the answer was like, definitely to say why I man. Okay, I yeah. didn't know that. I thought oh, it was yeah. a greeting. So there you go. I've yeah. just learned something new. And what about a similar sounding phrase? Howie. Howie. So you can say howie or you can say howe. So howie is like, come on. If someone was... Um, going to jump off a, a diving board. Going to jump off a diving board. And I was going to say howie. Or if I was telling someone to come, I'd say howe, man. So my niece is two and she says, howe, man, nana. Howe. <laughs> Okay, lovely. I like that one. Um, what does mortal mean? Cause, uh, mortal obviously is a word that we use um, generally in English, yeah. but it has a different meaning. Mortal is drunk. So if you, I was absolutely mortal last night, you would say I was drunk last night. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Um, you say I instead of yes. Is that quite common or just occasionally? Yeah, no, it's quite common. Um, most people will say I. Okay. And um, what about, what does this mean to ga gan? Gan, to go. To gan is go. Yeah, gan is go. So. And if you're saying going, so the continuous, I'm going, is, is that ganning? Ganin? I'm ganning. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's really different, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but if, if you were to change the verb completely and say, in the past, I went, so that doesn't change? No. No, I it's went. just went. Okay. Um, what does hoy mean? Hoy. Chuck. Throw. <laughs> So, so you'd say, I hoid it. I hoid it, or you'd say, hoid that away, man. If you want to put something in the bin, you'd say, instead of saying, put it in the bin, you'd say, hoid it away. <laughs> Fantastic. And um, this is something that I've heard in a few places, but you say, ben, ben, and that's for children or for babies? Yeah, just the bens. The bens, the kids. The kids, the okay. baby, the okay. ben. Um, what about, oh, so Bonnie. Bonnie something you say often, or Bonnie, is that quite old-fashioned? No, she's a bonnie lass. The same as a canny lass. A canny lass would mean she's a nice lass. A bonny lass would mean she is... Pretty? Pretty. That's like attractive. She's a pretty girl. Yeah, okay. And um, what does yem mean? So many words here I've literally never heard. Yem. So it's kind of pronounced yem. But a ch, ch. Yeah, it's like a yem. I'm going I'm yem. So I'm going yem means I'm going home. So yem is home. That's really interesting because actually in, in, in British English, generally, um, I would say we don't constrict our H's. In most accents, there's no constriction. There is some constriction in um, in the Scouse accent, in the Liverpool accent, occasionally, yeah. this sound. Um, but that's usually a feature of, of foreign accents, of Russian accents, um, a whole bunch of others. But the, so but that's one word where you do have this h sound, yeah. which is very unique. Yeah. Um, okay, just a couple more here. I've got this one, Yarit Hini. <laughs> so yeah, 
you're all right. You're all right, Henny. We'll be, are you all right? And it's, Henny's like for a woman. Is that, it's like, it's, it sounds like honey. Is it something you'd say now? Um, or is it old fashioned? It's quite old fashioned. So you, you might hear your grandparents you say it. You might hear your grandparents say it. You all right, Henny? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, well, that's interesting. And then I've got um, D instead of do. Yeah. D, you say that? Do you say that? It wouldn't be, it wouldn't <laughs> no. be in that situation. <laughs> How would you use it? I'm going to do that the night. I'm going to do. do that. So I'm when it's kind of more weak, tonight. when it's in yeah. a weak position. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we would just be like, I'm going to do that the night. Okay, lovely. And the night, you add the in. Yeah. Oh, is that just when you're saying, like, t- two night and two day, it becomes the night and the day? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so um, I did that the deer. Yeah. And I did that the night, the neat. No, so the, it's weird because today would be the day I'm going to play golf. I'm going to play golf the day. Uh-huh. And the night would be um, I'm going to do that the night. But you wouldn't say in, you wouldn't talk about the past right. as in the night. Right, okay. You would. It's only if it's going to happen. Okay, so two night. Yeah, two. Two day. night and two day would be the night, the day. Yeah. Okay, that's so it's so much fun. I love this accent, and uh, I think that's everything. Oh, divent. What's divent? Is the last one divent. Don't. Okay. Didn't do that. Okay. <laughs> don't do that fantastic well it's been so much fun i really do um love it's one of my favorite accents i'd love to know actually what your favorite accent is please do write that in the comments section below and if you've enjoyed listening to sophia which i certainly have um you can hear more from her on her twitter page which is Sophia Catlaw. <laughs> oh, and I'll put a link to that down in the description box below, um, along with some other helpful links to link you to information about this particular um, accent and the dialects that, that she used. How, how do you say goodbye in a Geordie? Is there, is there a way of saying goodbye? Or is ta-ra! It... <laughs> ta-ra! <laughs> All right then, guys, ta-ra! <laughs> Thank you for joining me on this Geordie accent discovery. If you're a Geordie native and you feel we've missed a feature or some dialect, then please do let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to follow this channel. And if you have time and want to look at some more accents, then why not check out one of these other accent videos? Otherwise, take care and I'll see you next time.